Okay, so this is lesson 3-1, which is graphing polynomial functions. Our essential question is, how do the key features of a polynomial function help you sketch its graph? So the first example is, how can you write a polynomial in standard form and use it to identify the leading coefficient, the degree, and the number of terms? Okay, so first of all, standard form, we need to define that. It's the highest to lowest power of x. So we arrange our terms with the highest power of x, then the next highest, and so on. So if I were to rearrange this, I would get 2x cubed, that's my highest power of x, minus 4x plus 9. So this polynomial is in standard form because it's decreasing powers of x. So the other things we need to talk about are leading coefficient. So these different colors here. So the leading coefficient is the coefficient that is with your highest power of x. So that will be 2. 2 is our leading coefficient in this problem. Okay. Our next term is the degree. The degree is the highest power of x. So this is a third degree polynomial. And the final thing we need to identify is the number of terms. So each term is um, variables or constants that are being multiplied together and they're separated with a plus or a minus. So this is one term, two terms, three terms. So we would say there are three terms. So you can use the number of terms and the degree to name the polynomial. So this example right here would be a third degree trinomial because we say, so we say the degree first and then there are three terms, so that's a trinomial. If there were only two terms, it'd be a binomial. If there's only one term, it's a monomial. Um, and then usually above three terms, we just say polynomial. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So our next example is talking about end behavior of polynomials. So there are four situations that we could have. So we're going to kind of label these and get used to the notation that you're going to use to talk about end behavior. So this first one is polynomials that are odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. So that means that the degree is odd and the leading coefficient, the number with it, is positive. So these are three, the red, the green, the blue, these are three examples of odd positive. So the way we describe the end behavior is you're always going to have an x that goes to negative infinity and an x that goes to positive infinity. So you're gonna see that written for everyone. What this is referring to, so negative infinity is talking about to the left, and this is talking about to the right. So if you just understand that every single one, so if I go over here, this is also going to have a x goes to negative infinity and x goes to positive infinity, referring to left and right. Okay, so now we have to say what happens to the y as we move to the left. So if you look down here, um, or here, or here, as we move to the left, the graphs are going down. So we would say y goes to negative infinity. And then as we go to the right, that's talking about these arrows up here, they're going up to positive infinity. So as we go to the right, we're going to positive infinity. This second graph over here is an example of odd with a negative leading coefficient. So odd and negative. So odd and negative, you can see that it's the opposite. As we go to the left, our graph is going up. And as we go to the right, our graph is going down. So getting used to that notation of as x goes to positive infinity and as x goes to negative infinity, that's probably the trickiest part of this. Okay, the last two are even. So this is even. Oops. even and positive, and this one is even and negative. So you can see with the odd graphs, 
you have one end that's going up and one end that's going down, where with the even graphs, both ends are going the same direction. So again, we're going to have, as we go to the left, oops, as we go to the left and as we go to the right, and we're going to have as we go to the left and as we go to the right. So for this graph on the left here, we can see both to the left and the right, they're increasing. So we would say y is going to positive infinity and y is going to positive infinity. Then if we look over here, as we go to the left and right, y is going to negative infinity. Okay, so that is end behavior. The last thing we're going to talk about is how you can use um, features of a graph, like tables and different features to identify what your graph is going to look like. So this says to consider the polynomial function f of x equals negative 0.5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2. So this would be a fourth degree trinomial. Okay, so again we have three terms. The degree is four. And I can tell that this is an even degree and my leading coefficient is negative. So this is an even negative. So before I even graph it, before you look down here at my example parts, um, you will, you can identify that you should, this graph should be opening down. Both end behaviors are going to head down. Okay, so one way of sketching a graph is to make a table. So I was gonna talk about, I have a table here, but how do I get a table? So I was gonna show you on Desmos. So if we go into Desmos here, so I already have the equation written out. And notice, you can turn off the graph. Sometimes we rely too heavily on the graph, and that's not going to give us as exact values as if we use something like a table. So you can use Desmos, but you don't need to focus on what the graph is looking like right now. So up here, the little settings, okay, you know, so again, if I hit right here, up here in the upper um, right hand part of where the equation is. I'm going to hit that button and then you'll notice it has table and then it has a copy and it has a delete. So I'm going to hit the table and you will notice that it made a table for me. Now maybe I want more values in my table so I'm going to add in negative 3 and a positive 3. And then it did dump those points on my graph, and I can, I can um, graph it if I want to, but all I really care about right now is I'm focused on the table. So again, you use that little settings up in the upper right-hand um, part of the left side of the screen, and then you are just hitting the table feature. Okay, so if we go back to... Our example here so you can tell by the table over here you can tell where your graph is increasing or decreasing and when it's changing from increasing to decreasing you're gonna have a turning point so here we have one two three turning points turning points are where your graph goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing other key features of our graph these points up here we call relative maximums. So what it means by a relative maximum is that it's relative, it's a maximum relative to the area of the graph around it. It might not be the very highest point of the graph altogether, but it is the highest point relative to the points around it. This point right here would be a relative minimum. Oops, I'm in trouble writing tiny. Okay, so that's a relative minimum. So again, relative maxes, relative mins. It's not, so we can tell this point is not the lowest point of our graph because our graph keeps going down to negative infinity. Um, these are the actual highest points of our graph, so they are maximums, but there's two of them. So that's why we, we can use the term relative maximums and relative minimums to just talk about the location of um, the turning points of our graph. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.